Here in Morgenröte Rautenkranz in the rolling hills of southeast Germany is the birthplace of Sigmund Jahn, the first German to take a trip to space. It was here he first heard of the beginning of the space age 50 years ago. Today the place is home to a space museum. I was nine years old. I remember the announcement. They said at night you could see Sputnik in a certain direction, from the southeast. We saw it, but we were surprised it wasn't bright or shining. The radio signal Sputnik broadcast across the world was confirmed by the Jodrell Bank radio telescope in the UK. It was a huge propaganda coup for the Soviet Union. The US had lost round one of the space race. I remember it was in 1957. It was the 4th of October. I wanted to learn how to fly. I was studying to be a pilot. We flew a Soviet plane, the Yak-18. We were all so full of enthusiasm. We were young. We didn't think about going into space. The Space Museum is the pride of the local community and tells the story of how the superpowers used space as an instrument of the Cold War. Sputnik had given the Soviets a lead in the space race, but then on the 7th of April 1961 came the next shock to the West. Vladimir Remek, the first man in space who was neither a Russian nor an American, remembers. I was in the seventh grade in primary school. We heard via the loudspeaker that was in every classroom the director's announcement, listen to this important message, the first manned spaceflight is underway. Later they gave us more details. I was 13 and I decided, with the conviction of youth, that I wanted to be a cosmonaut. In one hour and 45 minutes, the Vostok capsule had completed a full orbit of the Earth, one of humankind's greatest achievements. Yuri Gagarin was in space for a short time, once, around the Earth. But he said, you can eat there, you can live, and you don't go insane. This was important, the first steps. Meanwhile, NASA launched the Mercury project, and despite a number of problems, the space race got underway. US President John F. Kennedy put the stakes very high. We shall send to the moon 240,000 miles away from the control station in Houston, a giant rocket more than 300 feet tall. And in July 1969, America finally got its revenge. However, despite the initial rivalry between the two superpowers, a new spirit of cooperation was developing in the 1970s. I have to stress the importance of the Soyuz Apollo programs, which demonstrate the possibility of cooperation between the two superpowers, right in the middle of the Cold War. It was vital for future international cooperation. The Soyuz Apollo provided the evidence. Space is for all mankind and an excellent ground for international cooperation. Already in the 1960s, Europe had entered the scene with smaller ambitions though, launching a series of science missions and the first Meteosat weather satellites. Europe entered centre stage in the 1980s when the Giotto mission took a close look at the Halley Comet, sending back spectacular images. My personal understanding is that space activities should be international. These days, the example is the European Space Agency, which unites the representatives from a number of states, mostly European, but not only European. This allows for technological development at affordable prices. Right. 
The commercial success of Ariane is one of the biggest achievements of the European Space Agency, created in 1975. It brings together many different skills and paved the way for many other ambitious European space projects, notably the Galileo Satellite Navigation System and ESA's participation in the International Space Station. Finally, I would like to stress to the younger generations to build on the successes we have achieved in space exploration. The 21st century sees others keen to explore space. India and China are now involved, looking to explore the vastness and richness of space. There are also private initiatives, which want to make it possible for many more citizens of the Earth to pay a visit to space. We have only one Earth. We only have one Earth. We've seen from space that no borders exist between countries. Going out into space is the future. I want this future to come. And when it comes to Mars or other planets, I want the world's major nations to work together. After a life of activity, passion and achievements, Sigmund Jan is enjoying his retirement in the Orr Mountains. Vladimir Remick is a member of the European Parliament in Strasbourg. Both are still proud of an adventure which began with a faint beep, beep, beep 50 years ago.